Hey guys, today I'll show you how to have your video react to your audio. We'll be syncing the amplitude of the song, or how loud it is, to a variety of different effects. For starters, we'll create a simple pump and shake effect. And keep in mind, this tutorial requires no third-party plugin, so you can just get right to it. Here's a quick example of what we'll be creating today. Okay, enough of that, let's go. First thing I do is I add in a song and also a picture to use as my background. Here I am scaling it down just because the picture has quite a high resolution. Today we'll be using the keyframe assistant to convert all of our audio amplitude into keyframes. Now before you begin, this will create keyframes based off of the entire amplitude of the song. If you wish to sync your effects to the base of the song, do what I do here before creating your keyframes. In order to isolate the base, we'll be creating a low pass filter. So go to effects and search for high low pass and then add it to your song. Go ahead and change the filter option to low pass. You might have to mess around with the cutoff frequency in order to isolate the bass to your liking. Once you've got that figured out, go ahead and create your keyframes. You do this by right clicking on your song, going to keyframe assistant, and then converting your audio to keyframes. You'll see a new layer called audio amplitude. Click on it and press U to open up your keyframes. You'll see a left and right channel, but for now we'll just use both channels. Unless of course you have something interesting going on between the left and right ear, be my guest. So we'll want to see what these keyframes look like. Go ahead and click on this little graph that's on the audio amplitude layer, and then click on the graph that's to the top right of it. Now you can remove that high low pass filter on your song. Okay, now that we have our keyframes, we can start creating some expressions to make something interesting. First thing we'll do is create a little pump effect, and we can do this by going to our background and messing around with the scale. And just as a disclaimer, I know nothing about expressions or coding. So if I do something over here that seems kind of redundant, forgive me. It's just how I accidentally made it work out. Disclaimers aside, go ahead and alt click that stopwatch. This will create a expression. Now you can parent this expression to the slider by dragging the lasso to the slider. Now you'll see the expression box pop up. I'll go ahead and show you what the expression looks like without altering anything first. Yep, that seems a little bit much, so we'll have to alter the expression just a little bit. Firstly, we'll divide the first part by a certain value, maybe 5 or 3. This will divide whatever number was in that slider by that value. Then you want to make sure that the picture takes up the entire screen. We'll do this by adding the original value before the second part of the expression. So here I just add value and then plus. You'll see now that the pumps are a lot less dramatic and it takes up the entire screen. But notice how incredibly stuttery it is. We can fix this by adding a smooth expression. So now we'll go back to our audio amplitude, and we'll click on that graph by the slider once again. You can visually see just how rough these keyframes are. We can fix this by averaging them out a little bit. So go ahead and create another expression by alt-clicking the stopwatch on the audio amplitude layer. So now we'll create a smooth expression. Your first value will be your width, and your second value will be samples. Your width is the range of time in which your keyframes are averaged. So for example, if you type in 0.1, that will be 0.1 seconds. So therefore, the range of which keyframes are being averaged is only 0.1 seconds. If you have a smaller number, it will be more accurate to the original, but be careful not to make it too small, because then it would just be as rough as it was before. The second number is the samples that you'll be using. A higher number will give you greater smoothness. In my case, I found 0.1 and 21 to be pretty good values, although you can certainly alter this yourself. If you click on the little graph by the expression, you can actually see the interpolation going on. This is actually a pretty good way of just seeing how smooth your expressions are. Apologies if that looks still a little bit stuttery, that's just because my preview is pretty slow. However, if it's not smooth enough, you can always increase the width, namely the first value, a little bit higher, maybe 0.2 seconds. So we'll go on to the second effect, which is the camera shake. We'll do this by creating an expression with the position on our background image. So go ahead and click on your background image and press P to pull up position. Create an expression as you have done before, and then parent that to the audio amplitude layer slider. Once again, we'll be altering the expression just a little bit. First of all, we won't be needing this first part of the expression. 
You can either replace the temps with the original positioning of the picture, or you can get rid of that part of the expression entirely. It's up to you. Next we'll be creating a wiggle effect, which is what we'll be making our camera shake. Go ahead and set your two values as whatever your slider is referenced as. In this case, it's just temp and that should be the default. Okay, that's also pretty intense, so we'll just decrease these values a little bit. The first value is the frequency of the wiggle, and the second value is the amplitude. Do some messing around just to see what works best for you. I found decreasing my frequency a lot and my amplitude by half to help make it look a lot better. So what I did was divide the first value by 20 and the second value by 2. A quick tip, if you're using many clips and pictures with this expression, I would highly suggest in creating a null layer and then parenting all those clips onto that null layer. And there you go, that's how you make your camera react to your audio. I won't go into too much detail about the other effects I've done, that's for another tutorial, but I'll just quickly list over them. First I created a gradient, which I used its opacity to match to the beat, and then I made the blending layer overlay. Then I created an audio spectrum using Photoshop's default effect. I made sure to parent the audio spectrum to the background so that it stays together. And finally some particles just floating around. And we're pretty much done here. If you found this tutorial helpful and watched this far, great!